Maharashtra Pandit Satish K. Sharma, Sara L. Gates and uh, Patai Suresh Krishnamurti joining us this evening even as these attacks continue. Namaste. Thank you very, very much. Sara ji, uh, one of the aspects because from Australia to the United Kingdom to America, we've witnessed this and I've seen it where there is, a, uh, there is this concerted effort to one second tell Hindus to stay in line and you have, we will decide what you are going to do. The Hindu community has been told this repeatedly. Would you agree, disagree that this is manifest even in Australia? Can this be random and sporadic or do you believe there is an organized design to it? Saraji. Uh, certainly it's organized and it's, it's well funded. Uh, it's a well oil mach oiled machine and depending on circumstance and opportunity and demographics, uh, we've seen these type of incidents, whether it's psychological uh, systems abuse or whether it's physical violence uh, playing out in diaspora all around the world. And clearly uh, there's a, a universal uh, ideology and agenda behind it, and that is to disempower Hindus, to, uh, I guess, disenfranchise them of their positions within society and to smear them as terrorists and finally to have them uh, I guess, purged from uh, the countries. They've been calling for uh, de deportation and criminalising Hindus uh, for crimes that they have nothing to do with, or which are purely fictitious. But, but how is this mobilisation happening and who's stitching this narrative? Have you been able to find out who's doing that in Australia? I know names of people who are acting, but do I know who's funding them? Do I know who they work for in other contexts. And these types of things I have to leave to ASIO. I have reported what I do know to ASIO, just as I did when I, mm. I came across information that was uh, very important for intelligence in the UK during the course of these attacks. So I will continue mm. uh, to feed information to security and uh, put pressure on them to investigate. How was that person allowed Pandit Satish Sharmaji to get on top of the temple and bring down the flag at, at, at the Shivalaya there? How were these people allowed to throw bottles and also firecrackers into the Durga temple in, in, in uh, Smithik? And who are these people uh, to Jashi decide Ram, who can, who uh, can come, Pandit Ji, who can come into the UK, who can speak to people and who cannot? Isn't it the job of the British government? We have civil rights, we have freedoms, supposedly, and they're protected under law. It's an obligation on the police to ensure that every British citizen can go about their lawful business without harassment, without intimidation, and certainly without this sort of aggressive uh, hate. This is hate that we're seeing here. I'd just like to draw your attention to, there was an incident, a Muhammad Khan approached Her Majesty's coffin when it was lying in state, and immediately he was arrested and he was arrested under section 4a of the public order act and this says that a person can be arrested for behavior intending to cause alarm harassment or distress clearly all of the activities that we have seen on our screens and recorded they fall within the scope of that particular piece of legislation and yet not once has it been used you know i am inclined to ask the question that uh, does uh, peace and tranquility um, Her Majesty's peace, as it's called in, uh, in legal speak, does that not extend to Hindus? You know, in Durga Bhavan, we had the elderly, we had women and children, and yet they were being clearly harassed, they were being clearly targeted, and yet no arrests were taking place. Now, I do know that an awful lot of arrests happened overnight. Last night, a great number of arrests were conducted. I know that the individual who was responsible for sending out multiple inciting um, dog whistle calls to uh, hatred to people to assemble and uh, attack Hindus. He's been arrested and is now um, being interrogated. But this is all after the event. And what um, Sarahji said and what you have said, it needs to be borne in mind that after a period of harassment, we self-censor. I've spent the last two days, I was in Leicester only a few hours ago, and there is a very somber atmosphere there. Normally before Navratri, there is celebration. There are lights, people are decking their shops, people are excited, there's a buzz, and there's none of it whatsoever. So it is a direct attack on the quality of life of Hindus as Hindus and an attack on their religious places. The obligation on the security services is to ensure that this doesn't happen.